Welcome to this special edition of the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Mike Crowley, and we are joined today by uh, Police Chief James McIsaac and Fire Chief David Frizzell. And welcome to both of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. So, so I, I imagine that you're, you're facing special challenges with the coronavirus. Um, it, uh, can, can you talk about what some of those might be, how that's affecting your work? Chief Fazal, do you want to go first? Either, Chief. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so we respond um, to medicals and fires and other calls that uh, town residents request. And it's preparing for those calls, making sure our staff is trained, making sure that our staff has the equipment and the resources to respond to those calls and basically preparing for this current pandemic, uh, we feel it's going to expand and that we will have more, more calls for service. So it's really, we're still in this phase of preparation uh, as our call volume has actually been down, it's been quiet. Um, so we're getting ready for, you know, more calls. Okay, how about you, Chief McIsaac? Any increase in calls um, or special challenges that you've faced so far? Much like the fire department, we have not seen an increase in calls and um, we keep waiting. I hope it is not the calm before the storm. Um, but, uh, you know, much like the fire department, our officers are also uh, have, are anxious and have concerns about people that they interact with on a daily basis. So we're practicing the, the social distancing and uh, doing, you know, both departments and, and Beamer and everything are doing the best to get as much information out to, to offices uh, as possible. Um, e even if call, call volume um, has not increased at the moment, I'm just wondering if, if there's been any change in the, the nature of the kind of calls that you're getting, either of you? So from the fire department, we're still uh, receiving the regular types of calls that we get, just not in the same uh, amount. We still are getting alarm calls. We still are getting medical calls, uh, but the actual frequency of those calls is down. And okay. uh, the important thing to remind people is, uh, and we've been asked to remind people, is that 911 is for emergencies. There are a lot of people that are calling and asking for ge general information. Um, and the Belmont Emergency Management uh, EOC is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, to handle those general calls. And that number is 617-993-2222. And if they have a police question that's not an emergency, they can dial 617-484-1212. And the fire department uh, has a non-emergency number, which is 617-484-1300. And those calls will be answered uh, as they come in. Okay. Um, how about face masks and protective gear? Are, 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 are your departments well equipped? Have we started receiving any of the, um, the donated masks that, um, that um, uh, one local civic group is, is apparently donating? So uh, at the police department, we have um, the N95 masks. We feel as though right now we have a sufficient supply of them. We did receive the donation uh, from, from the group in Belmont, from the Chinese uh, group in Belmont, and it was much appreciated. And we will use that to supplement our existing supply right now. Um, we don't know, you know, nobody can predict what's going to happen. And, and hopefully, uh, it's comforting to have those masks there. Hopefully, we don't have to, uh, you know, we don't have to dip into them and use them. Or maybe we get at a point somewhere where we can then pass them along to somebody else who's in more urgent need of them. But we, we appreciated that donation. Uh, it was a tremendous donation. And we too at the <laughs> fire department also have received uh, an allotment of masks from them, the uh, uh, hospital masks. And uh, we have uh, N95, N100 masks, along with uh, protective gowns that we will wear and eye shields dealing with patients. And we actually have a fairly good stock of items because we've prepared for the H1N1 in the past and Ebola. And so we have those supplies on hand. Um, luckily, the uptick in calls has not occurred yet. But as the call volume increases, we will start to go through those supplies fairly rapidly. 
So the, the EMS folks, your, your ambulance operators, they have the gear that they need um, right now to respond to um, health-related calls that, that, that may or may not be um, uh, coronavirus related. Is that right? That is correct. And the actual screening process starts with the first call for service. Uh, the communications offices we have will actually start questioning the people about respiratory and if they've had any of the signs or symptoms of uh, the COVID-19 uh, disease. And that puts things in motion where we will limit the number of staff that will go into the house to limit the exposure. We will uh, hand the uh, the patient a mask to put on so that when if they cough or sneeze that uh, bodily fluids are not coming towards our responders, but are being contained. What if we got into a situation where um, um, members of your staff needed to be quarantined? How would that affect operations? That, that is my biggest concern right now. So we are um, doing multiple screenings during the day. So uh, when the firefighters report to work, they have to go through a screening process with an officer in charge where they are actually asked a series of questions and their uh, temperature is taken. And it's also, this is done uh, midway through their shift and when they leave their shift. So we're screening uh, to make sure that they're healthy and that they're not exhibiting any signs uh, because we can't take the chance of uh, passing this through the department. Otherwise, we won't have people to be able to respond to calls. Uh, Chief McIsaac, um, the, the same question to you. Yes, that's, uh, that's my number one concern is that, um, you know, we can't afford to have uh, our offices be sick and be, be quarantined. We have um, one officer out now who kind of sort of just had a head cold, but the doctor, uh, you know, wouldn't give a return to work note for 14 days. So that's one, if you start multiplying that by, by four or five, then we have a real problem on, on hand. So uh, we're not doing temperatures like the fire department, but we're, we're trying to keep our building um, as clean as possible. We're asking people that they call before coming to the police station or they do any business. We, we take reports over the phone if we have to. And this gets into even, you know, our offices are, are practicing social distancing out on the street. You know, with the playgrounds closed, we told them to use the, the PAs. And that's why we just ask people to please be as cooperative and as understanding as possible during um, this period because we want to keep our, off our offices healthy. That's our, our number one concern so that they're able to respond to when needed. Let, let me ask you if, um, you know, as so, so. Uh, Chief Frizzell has, has, has mentioned that, um, you know, we're, we're expecting um, the, this, the pandemic or at least the impact of the pandemic to expand. Do, do either of you, either, either for the police department or the fire department or both, feel that, that you know, you have the resources that, that you need in, in this budget to be able to, to respond appropriately? Or, or is there the possibility that, that budget starts becoming an issue? Mike, you know, we've never, you know, this is basically a, everybody uses the term uncharted waters um, yep. that we're in. As long as we stay healthy and as a department, um, you know, we, I believe we have the resources, we have the means, we have the, the equipment to successfully uh, provide police resources to the town of Belmont. But, you know, this is an emergency. And the very definition of emergency is you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and at some point, I think, you know, we'll, if, it, if it goes down that road, we'll have, you know, federal and state assistant, assistance. Um, but let's hope it doesn't. Okay. And, um, you know, in, any advice for town residents? I know that the playgrounds, tennis courts, things like this have been closed, but um, can residents still use the town fields or are, 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 are we advising folks to stay off of those? No, they're advised to stay off of the fields. Um, I see. Just last week when we put the, uh, the other day when we put the order out over the weekend, I stopped somebody at Grove Street from going on and they said, well, it's just me and, and you know, my two children. I said, but when people see you there, other people are going to come because they think the, the playground is open. And we're really, you know, we're at a crucial point with this virus right now. We really need to keep people separate um, from each other. And I know that it, there's a lot of disappointing things that have happened. You know, kids have missed 
you know, they're, they're going to miss their graduations probably this semesters of school. And, and, but you know, those are all unfortunate, but they're not tragedies. And, and we're trying to avoid, avoid a real tragedy here it's with awesome. our country. So I concur. Uh, social distancing uh, and keeping people separated uh, is going to be the way that we uh, beat this cure, uh, beat this disease. Um, the, uh, there was a doctor from Chicago that actually did a, a, a great talk on it, the social distancing and how if we keep the numbers down and it really doesn't affect our, our community, we actually did a good job. So... That, that's that's great to hear. Um, is is there anything else that you would like Belmont residents to know um, with respect to the police and fire or the the, the pandemic? Um, um, and any anything else that you'd like to share? I, I would say that uh, keep on top of information. We keep updating, you know, web pages and things like that, um, and that be informed. Uh, don't panic. Don't need to run down a star market and raid the, the shelves of toilet paper and things like that. Um, we will get through this as a community. Um, it's unprecedented. It's, I've never seen anything like this in my three decades on the department. Um, but um, it's, it's unique, and we will get through this. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Jamie, anything that you'd like to, um, to, to add to that? Along the similar uh, lines, you know, people should get to be getting their information from the CDC, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and, and the Belmont Health Department. Um, there's so much what kind of misinformation out there, uh, people posting, you know, what the, the um, symptoms are of this, and, um, you know, there's going to be a vaccine, and this pill works, and that pill. Really, just if, if you want the information, the CDC, the, the State Department of Public Health, and and Wes, our own Department of Health, does a great job of, of providing up-to-date information on this, um, you know, on this virus. And you know, I, I think what's unsettling is we, 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 so many people used to having control over their lives, whether it's their schedules or not, and they've, they've, they've lost that control. And I think, it, you know, we need to focus on the things we can control. You know, whether it's how we're going to react to these, you know these changes and things like that. We just hope everybody react, reacts in a positive way and uh, keeps a positive attitude and you know, we'll, get, we'll get through this. Well, thanks so much, uh, Chief McIsaac and um, also Chief Frizzell. And, and we deeply appreciate um, the efforts of both you and your departments as the crisis continues. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome.